we will now discuss a phi 3 theory and that will give us an opportunity to introduce Mandelstam variables and to discuss crossing th symmetry. This theory is not more complicated than the phi 4 theory. One issue is that with an odd power of the field, uh, the potential energy is not bounded from below and we are not guaranteed to have a ground state. It is, however, a well-justified effective theory. As long as we don't go into crazy energy regime, uh, we can do a lot of physics with it. And in particular, the basic scattering processes are similar qualitatively than those we would have in more advanced theories uh, like QED, QCD, etc. With a bit of experience, you will uh, learn how to get the Feynman rules from uh, the Lagrangian itself. And in particular, um, we see that the only thing which changes with the phi 4 theory is the interaction term. So all the propagators for the scalar fields will be the same. Uh, most of the rules remain the same, in, except for the expression for the vertex, and in particular, the number of lines which connect to the vertex. Because we have only three fields here, we will have only three lines connecting to the vertex. Uh, we had four when we were in the uh, phi 4 theory. And the value of the vertex, as in the phi 4 theory, is simply um, proportional to the uh, coupling constant we have in the interaction term. And the three factorial we have in the denominator is here to account for the different combinations uh, different possibilities to connect the lines to the vertex. So we have a three factorial because we have three lines. In the phi 4 theory, we had a four factorial. So if we take, for example, the scattering of two particles, we can easily work out that at three level, that is without loops, we have only three diagrams contributing. To determine the momenta of the internal lines, we simply uh, use the energy momentum conservation at one of the vertex, which comes from one of the Feynman rules, and also that naturally get rid of the integral over the internal momenta, which is another of the Feynman rules. So as a result, we can w uh, write the amplitudes for each of these diagrams. Here I have introduced the Mandelstam variables S, T, and U. These variables are often used in calculation of uh, scattering of two particles or in the decay of one particle into three particles. In particular, they are useful when you can use crossing symmetries, like in this case, as we see that uh, the only thing which change um, for the amplitude between these three diagrams is uh, just uh, Mandelstam variable. So for the S diagram, we have uh, S in the denominator. If we change S into T, we get the T diagram. And if we change T into U, we, can, we get the U diagram. And in fact, the Mandelstam variables uh, are not only used in the phi 3 theory. This is just an example. They are actually useful in many other theories like QED or QCD, etc. And in this series, we have different particles. So in QED, for instance, we will have photons, electrons. So the lines which connect the vertex don't necessarily correspond to the same particles, meaning that they can have different masses. Um, so the Mandelstam variables are still useful, even if we have different masses. And we have, in general, a property which we can show is that s plus t plus u is equal to the sum of the square of the masses of the particles involved. As an exercise, you can show that this equation holds in the phi 3 theory, where all the masses are the same because we only have one field, the field phi, with only one mass m. Um, and for that, you need to use energy momentum conservation and the fact that the external lines are on mass shell. That means that P squared equals M squared for the external lines.